A young man stares lay on a hot young senior of his, who is wandering around in the library, wearing a bunny costume. While he is interested in checking out more of her, his moral obligations are there to stop him. But we will discuss this later. The show starts off with a young man, Azuzagawa Sakuda, waking up from a hazy dream. He isn't sure what he dreamt of, but vaguely remembers that it was something important. As he gets up, he finds a journal talking about an event of May 6, three weeks prior from now. It describes his meeting with a bunny girl senior, but for some weird reason, his mind cannot pick up the name as if it had been erased from his memory. At the library, Sakuda is minding his own business when a girl wearing a bunny costume passes right beside him, awakening his curiosity. After following her, he quickly realizes this is the school's favorite girl, Mei Sakurajima. Surprisingly, the other people don't give much heed to her, almost as if she is invisible to them. Mei also acts as if he couldn't see her, but is amazed when he tells her that she is a visible plane for the day. Mei instructs him to forget any of this ever happened. She was only trying to experiment on whether people would see her, and for his own good, to be as far away from her as possible. The following morning, he wakes up to find his sister, Keed, has sneaked into his bed once more. He doesn't want a teenager in his bed every time he wakes and teaches her to act like an adult as she would be one soon. On his way to school, he asks his friend, Yuma, what he would think of a bunny girl at a library. The other is ecstatic about it, but he just tells her that it was one of his fantasies and nothing serious he should think about. Afterward, the two noticed their senior Mang and according to his friend, he decided to attend the school after her hiatus from the showbiz industry. He feels for her, as it would be pretty rough to start school in the middle of the year and catch up with everything. Suddenly, the other's girlfriend arrives, taking him away before giving Sakuda a stare full of disgust. He doesn't really care about it, though. Later after the class, the girl approaches him and disdainfully instructs him to be as far away from her boyfriend as possible, as it would ruin his reputation. Since she has been a pain for him lately, he casually asks whether it is that time of the month, pissing her off. On his way back, he finds a couple taking a picture of Mei without her consent, and steps in to make them buzz off. The other thanks him and assures him that these sorts of things don't really matter to her, as she doesn't take them seriously. On the train, Mei reveals that she did some research on Sakuda and found out that he got into a fight with three other students, sending them to the hospital, the reason he is hated by his classmates, though the other denies these rumors and assures her that nothing of that sort ever happened. Ida Mei believes that the story is too convoluted to be true. On their way, Sakuda explains that she might have puberty syndrome where things happen unknown to people's awareness and his younger sister was also subjected to it. The two stop by Azusawa's apartment, where he shows her the scar on his chest, he doesn't know how he got it, and believes this is one of the cases of puberty syndrome. Kei barges in, and she is too timid to talk to a stranger casually, so Sakuta takes the role of her informer. Afterward, Mei describes the whole thing as being invisible, and she only found out when she was in an aquarium and nobody gave her a stare. Since he doesn't want her to be forgotten completely, Sakuta advises her to return to showbiz, hitting a nerve and causing her to leave in disdain. After that incident, he doesn't see her around the school, and one day asks a reporter about her, who provides him with information unavailable to the public. Later, while returning home, he realizes that if she continues being invisible, her life will be ruined and rushes off to his apartment only to find her awaiting him. May's health isn't good as more and more people have started to forget her, and now even the people in her own town can't see her anymore. Sakuda approaches one of his friends, Ryo Futaba, about puberty syndrome, and the other demonstrates by using various quantum mechanics and the anomaly of Schrodinger's cat. Sakuda ultimately realizes that the existence of one depends upon the observer and runs off to meet Mei. Later, while they are shopping, the other reveals that whatever she touches also becomes invisible, and this prompts Sakuda to try out an experiment. He wants to see whether he would also become invisible, and the other knows that he wants to fantasize about this, though she still touches him. Unfortunately, Sakuna realizes that no matter what he does, he will always be visible. On their way back, Sakuna once again tells her to return to the industry and reveals that the reason she left it was that she didn't want to have a photo shoot in a swimsuit, while her manager, her own mother, was so looking forward to it. Mei doesn't feel any connection towards her as she feels she has only been used for money by her mother. After questioning him about the source of such information, Sakuna reveals that he had to let the reporter take pictures of his scar, putting himself in the worst situation. Mei is mad at his lunatic decision and quickly calls the reporter so she could delete his photo. In exchange, she lets her know the secret about her returning to showbiz. Sakuda is surprised at this and Mei reveals that her reason for the meeting was to let him know. She further invites him for dinner as this will be the last night she wouldn't have to worry about everything, though not a date. The following day, Sakuda finds a lost child and as he is about to help her, a girl mistakes him for a pedophile and kicks him. 
Though after explaining the situation, he gets his revenge by kicking her in the same spot. It does invite troublesome moments, however. After he reaches his destination, Meg complains about the rascal making her wait for more than an hour, and the two get going. They head to a beach where Mae invites her mother to inform her of the decision she has made by starting work for another agency. However, Mae is horrified when she finds out that her own mother has forgotten her. The two spend the entire day looking for people who would even vaguely remember her but have no luck. After returning to her apartment, she decides to take a bath, while instructing the other to get out of her room. Gut with self-proclaimed mature person wouldn't want that and Sakuda gets to be in the room the entire time. He quickly calls his friend to find out whether he remembers Mae. Sakuda is amazed that he still remembers her and quickly asks him about Futaba's contact details. After calling her, he wants her to solve purity syndrome, and the other responds that while there may be a solution, it may take a good while. As they are about to sleep later, Mei asks him for a kiss, but the question of whether she is sexually frustrated makes her rethink her decision. She is worried she would be completely forgotten by everyone, but Sakuda assures her that he will always be there, and in case she still needs a hand, the two can cuddle. After Mei wakes up, she notices that Sakuda is still tired and the other tells her that he didn't get even a moment of rest as he was really worried. As Futaba advised him, the two head to school to check whether the students remember her, but are disappointed when all turn them down. As he is feeling down, Futaba approaches him and informs him about the various realities of Schrodinger's cat. She deduces that since they didn't get any sleep last night, they are the only ones who remember her. And in the worst case, the two will likely forget about her tomorrow. However, Sakuta doesn't want to give up and buys some energy drinks to keep him awake for the night and study for their exam. Mei is concerned as he has such dark bags beneath his eyes, but he assures her that he will get enough sleep when he is done with the exam. At the school, he encounters Futaba once more, but this time, the other doesn't have the slightest memory of their senior. Later at night, Mei notices that he is doing so much for her sake and helps him with studying kanji. She tricks him into consuming sleeping pills before emotionally bidding her farewell. The following morning, as he wakes up, he doesn't remember anything and finds a journal, informing him about all that had traversed for the past few weeks. He tries his best to remember it, but his mind can't seem to replicate these memories. At the school, Futaba hands him a note encouraging Sakuta to keep loving her. During the exam, Sakuta is having a hard time solving an answer, and as his eyes lie upon a kanji, he starts to remember him and Mei arguing over it. This single memory is enough to replicate and engrave her existence into his mind, and he quickly runs away from his class in the middle of the exam. Sakuta resolved to etch her existence into every student's mind, and for that, he had to go to the school grounds to announce his love for her. Fortunately, this is enough for her to show up, and after slapping him for having forgotten about her albeit for a single night, she accepts his love. Moreover, to clear out his name, she informs the students about the rumors being wrong, making everyone believe him. The two are quickly sent to the staff room to get yelled at by the teachers. Later, his friends admire how strong his nerves are and even make fun of him for not standing up for himself, but losing all the shame for a senior hot girl. After seeing the news about Japan winning a football match, Sakuda heads off to school and discusses it with his friends. He then has lunch together with Mei, where she makes him confess to her, as they have promised. Mei has taken a role in an upcoming series and informs him about the kiss scene. Hearing this, Sakuda wants her to take down the offer, but she teases him by telling him that they already had a kiss shared, which Sakuba doesn't remember, so if he wants to replicate that exact moment. Mei takes advantage of the situation and gives him an indirect kiss. Afterward, he asks her out and the other agrees to it. He is anxious to wait for tomorrow as he is finally getting to see another side of Mei, but everything falls off after he realizes he is living the same exact day as yesterday. He tries asking his friends about it, but they don't feel anything unusual. On the third day, he finds himself stuck in a time loop and reaches out to Futaba to help him. After doing some research, the other attributes this process to the phenomenon of Leplay's demon, and tells him that there is someone acting out of the loop. Sakuba doesn't know how he is going to find that particular person out of 7 billion people on Earth, but still thinks it's worth a try. Fortunately, he comes across that person on the same day, and it is none other than the girl who kicked him Tomo. She is scared of how the days are repeating and wants someone to rescue her. Sakuda wants to know why she is acting out of the loop, but the other doesn't answer him, and the two are left in a weird position when each of their lovers barges into the room. He tries talking to Mai, but the other refuses to listen to anything, and just heads back home. Later, Tomo has gotten a job at the same restaurant as Sakuda, and he comes to the conclusion that she has spread rumors about dating him as she doesn't want to go out with Mizawa, her friend's crush. Sakuda doesn't like being used as a scapegoat, but the other basically begs him to pretend to be in love with her, and after not convincing him entirely, she just takes a picture of him to make her friends believe she isn't really lonely. 
Later, as Secuta is done bathing, he hears a knock on the door and is surprised when Mai herself is here. Upon opening the door, the other wants him to make things clear. Tomo is afraid that she will become an outcast if she goes out with Misawa, as her friends have their eyes on him. Since she doesn't want to get on her bad side, she is ready to reject the guy trying to ask her out. After explaining everything to Mai, she understands her situation and still decides to punish Sakuta, much to his pleasure. Since Katie is a fan of her series, she has brought a gift for her, and they are equally surprised at how pretty she looks wearing it. As she is about to leave, Mai asks him once more whether he is going out with Tomo, and Sakuta responds that he just wants to help her by not letting her lose her place in the Wicked Society. The following day, he asks his friend about Misawa, particularly his con, so he could dislike him and feel better about ruining his chances with Tomo. In turn, Yuwa informs him about the other having multiple exes, while each time badmouthing them. This makes Sakuta feel better about it, and he heads off on his date. After the two meet up, Tomo asks for his chat ID, but is surprised when the other tells him that he dumped it into an ocean. The two run into her friend, who is searching for her phone strap on the beach. After helping her out, the two return to their homes. The following night, Mei checks up on Sakuta to find out how their date went. Sakuta still has eyes only for her and teases Mei multiple times by telling her he would come over right now. As she is busy with her shooting, the two don't get enough time to meet up and promise to see each other when she is free. The following day at school, Yuma's girlfriend confronts him about talking to his friend and in turn, he mocks her for being so butthurt about irrelevant questions. At work, he informs Yuma about this and he decides to break up with her. He also tells Sakuta about the newly risen strange rumors about Tomo, spiraling from their basketball team chat. He immediately realizes Mezawa is behind this and confronts him the following day. After embarrassing him in front of the whole school, the two run outside, where Tomo admits to being a virgin and tells him that he shouldn't believe in rumors, even though he didn't to begin with. She wants to repay Sakuta for his kindness, and the other asks her to continue being friends even after their fake relationship is over. Later that night, while watching a clip of Mei, Tomo is jealous and wonders whether she can overcome this hurdle to be his girlfriend. The summer break is about to begin and Sakuta is looking forward to breaking up the fake relationship with Tomo. The two go shopping to buy clothes for their last beach trip, and he helps her choose her swimsuit. After school, the two head over there, and even though Sakuta wishes to remove his shirt, the scar on his chest makes him feel otherwise. Tomo wants to be complimented on her looks, but the other's perseverance of her as a cute girl just embarrasses her further. As they get ready to leave, the two have a breakup handshake as they go back to living their lives as usual. After the summer break is announced, Sakuta finally has some peace and decides to get full rest. However, Kib wakes up once again to tell him he is getting late for school, and the other realizes he is stuck in the loop once more. Thinking that Tomo is likely the Laplace demon this time as well, he approaches her to ask about it, but the other has no idea. Frustrated, he asks for Futaba's help, and the two come to a conclusion that either he himself didn't like the decision, or Tomo is lying. Sakuta feels the latter is the case. The loop has begun, and he experiences the same events of July 18th multiple times. After getting tired of it, Sakuta decides to head off to another location for a change, Enoshima. There he confronts her about her lies and assures her even if the day were to repeat a thousand times, Sakuta would still have feelings for Mag, breaking the other one's hurt. Tomo believes that feelings can change, and if she continued the cycle, he would eventually have feelings for her by spending more time with her. However, Sakuta admits to having no feelings for her, neither is he expecting anything to arise. He only sees her as a friend and would like it if things remained that way. Tomo is disappointed at hearing this, and her bright eyes begin to tear, erupting steam of droplets. After consoling her, Sakuta heads off to his home to get some decent sleep. However, much to his astonishment, he wakes up on June 27th once again. He cannot believe this, and after experiencing all the events once again, he informs Futaba about this. The other deduces that it is quantum entanglement and wants to know how they met the first time. Sakuta instantly tells her about the two kicking each other in the butt, prompting her to command him to bend over. Later, while he is returning home alongside Mei, he encounters his first love, Shuko, who is saving a cat from the rain. Surprisingly, she doesn't remember him. Since Shuko doesn't know how to take care of a cat properly, Sakuta decides to take it in and lets her come over to practice. Later, he encounters Futaba and informs her about his first love suddenly meeting him and not remembering him. She feels that the Shuko he met isn't really the one he loved and that she might be a doppelganger, though the other one hardly believes that. He wonders whether she is going to meet up with Yuma, as she has feelings for him, but the other is too embarrassed to talk to him and passes on the opportunity. At his work set, Tomo files in the request to change her shift for a night, as she wants to go out with her friends. As he is serving the customers, Sakuta spots an unusual guest and decides to check up on her. 
Since the two didn't really get time for each other the past week, Maya herself wanted to see how he is doing and wait until his shift is over. On their way back, the two notice Futaba heading into a net cafe, and after missing her inside, Sakuta contacts her, only for it to be picked up by seemingly another Futaba back at home. After catching the one inside the net cafe, Sakuta realizes this is the real Futaba, and she informs him about the other one who continuously annoys her and doesn't leave her house. Since she has nowhere to go, Sakuta decides to take her to his home where she can spend the night and May follows as well. Afterward, Futaba admits that her two personalities split due to quantum entanglement, and thus their consciousness is sensed. At midnight, Sakuta instructs May to remain with Futaba here, and he will go check up on the other. The two are about to kiss, but May takes back her decision, and Sakuta has to wait long for his first kiss. The following day, Sakuta confronts her about this, but doesn't reach any conclusion as she is just as convincing as the Futaba at his house. May receives a call from her manager informing her about the urgency, and she informs Sakuta about this. As he is about to leave, Saki approaches him and tells him about the suspicious pictures Futaba has been posting on her secret account lately. Sakuta heads back home and informs Futaba about the other's activities. She reveals that she made this account not long ago but couldn't keep it active as she had nothing interesting to post. Furthermore, she explains the reason why the other would continue posting as she has always struggled with an inferiority complex and wanted some attention. Since her personality hated her developed body, she believed that caused the other one to split away. Afterward, Mai informs him about the agency's ban on her dating, but she isn't easy to tame like other idols and believes that this decision is only up to the two. The following morning, the two are coming back from school when Sakuta finds the other Futaba post images from the station. In a weird turn of events, someone recognizes the uniform and wants to meet her right away. She is horrified at this experience, but thankfully, Sakuba is here to help her. Later, she convinces him to spend the night with her as she feels scared and Sakuta assists her in getting close to Yuma. After deliberately making the others come over late at night, Futaba realizes just how lucky she is for having such precious friends. The three go to a nearby beach to play around with fireworks, and this is enough to put a smile back on Futaba's face. Before going to their homes, the other Futaba gives Sakuta her phone so he could hand it over to the other self, and reveals that she deleted the account. After relaying it to Futaba at his home, he decides to sleep and doesn't find her there after waking up. He quickly heads over to her house and the other informs him that she should be at school as that is her favorite spot. As he enters the class, she reveals that she is jealous of herself for having enjoyed time with him, and he assures her that the three will enjoy time once more, however, he suddenly passes out. Upon waking up at the hospital, Sakuta finds Futaba worried, and the other reveals that she wants to see the fireworks at Enoshima too. After calling her other self and having her request accepted, she disappears, unifying with her other persona. The three head off there, and she instructs Yuma to make up with his girlfriend, despite having feelings for him. The new school term has commenced, but Sakuta faces the challenge of not being allowed to go on public dates with Mei due to her agency's policies. Despite his efforts, he cannot locate her and runs around the school in vain. However, while walking on the street, he unexpectedly finds her looming around. Upon approaching her, he realizes that she isn't actually her, and that the real Mei has switched bodies with her younger half-sister, Nadoka Toyohama, who is an idol. Since they have no other choice, they decide to embrace their situation and live each other's lives. Mei takes on Nadoka's activities, and Nadoka assumes Mei's responsibilities, while being assisted by her boyfriend. During their journey of adapting to their swapped lives, Sakuta uncovers a deep-seated grudge between the siblings. As the two are on the beach alone, he does his best to encourage Nodoka to confess everything honestly. Later, after the three reunite, Nodoka reveals how she hated her ever since her childhood, as she was always living under her older sister's shadows. The other also hates how careless she is, but her resentment is directed toward their father as Mai feels he didn't treat the two of them correctly and taught them the life they should cherish. Despite having resentment toward each other, they continue living each other's lives. Mei has a photo shoot and Sakuta follows to check whether her sister is doing okay. However, he gets more tense once he realizes the other is panicking, eventually resulting in her collapsing. After Mei is informed of this incident, she gets worried about her younger sister and tells Sakuta that it isn't much of a deal. Later, Mei entrusts Sakuta with a key to her house and specifically instructs him not to open a certain cabinet. Curious, while Mei is bathing, Sakuta approaches the cabinet and makes a comment about Nodoka's efforts. Sakuta discovers an aluminium box hidden inside Mei's cabinet. Upon returning home, he is greeted by Keed wearing her school uniform and Mei surprises him with tickets to Nodoka's upcoming idol group concert. Although Mei's performance is outstanding, Nodoka becomes deeply upset when she witnesses their mother praising Mei while neglecting to do the same for her. 
She is grievously envious of her sister, as she is the only one getting praise and even when it was supposed to be her night tonight, it was Mei who was showered with praises. During a beach outing, Nagoka attempts to run into the sea, seemingly intent on drowning herself. Fortunately, Sakuta intervenes just in time and reassures Nadoka that Mei genuinely loves her. Back at home, Nadoka demands an explanation for the recent events. In response, Sakuta presents her with a box he discovered in Mei's cabinet. Inside, Nadoka finds heartfelt letters she had written to Mei when they were younger. Mei confesses that she read and cherished those letters as a source of motivation during the demanding periods of her career. Furthermore, Mei reveals that Nadoka's mother has always been concerned about her happiness while trying to live up to expectations. Mei encourages Nodoka to pursue her own goals and dreams. As they embrace, a remarkable occurrence takes place and both Nodoka and Mei revert to their original bodies. Ryo suggests that this phenomenon may be a form of quantum teleportation, resulting from Nodoka's desire to emulate her older sister and potentially fueled by Mei's underlying jealousy. Later, Nodoka decides to move in with Mei after a disagreement with her mother and Mei and Sakuta's relationship becomes public knowledge. During a press conference, Mei provides further insight into Sakuta's significant role in her life and how he influenced her decision to return to acting. However, she takes the opportunity to kindly request that the public respect his privacy. This declaration inspires Cade, and she decides to compile a list of goals she aims to achieve by the end of the year. Her goals include answering the phone, venturing outside, and attending school. With Sakuta's support, Cade embarks on the journey to accomplish each of her goals. Mai also lends a helping hand, particularly in assisting Kee with her goal of answering the phone. After getting fainted from simply talking on the phone, Sakuta feels that even this is progress and enters her room to check up on her. He is horrified to find a scar on her neck, although he is aware that is another symptom of puberty syndrome. As Kee gains confidence, she becomes capable of stepping outside their apartment with Sakuta's guidance, something which seemed impossible for her a while ago. As the days progress, they gradually make their way to the park and eventually to the beach. During their time at the beach, a chance encounter occurs with Kotomi Kano, who was once Kid's childhood friend. Sadly, Kid has no recollection of Kotomi or their shared memories. Sakuta reveals that Kid has lost her memories of her past, which comes as a revelation to both of them. Sakuna opens up to Mai and Nodoka, sharing the details of Kid's condition. He explains that due to the cyberbullying she endured, Kid developed associative amnesia. This had a profound impact on their mother who was unable to accept what had happened to her daughter and subsequently suffer a mental breakdown. Sakuta himself bears physical scars on his chest as a result of this challenging time. After that incident, his father left to focus on his work, while Sakuta was the one who bore the responsibility of taking care of his sister. While reading a note left by Kotomi in a borrowed book, Kid suddenly collapses as fragments of her past memories begin to resurface. However, after taking her to the hospital, a doctor informs them about her previous memories emerging. Sakuta realizes this recovery comes with the risk of losing her current life and memories. While talking to Mao about this on the phone, Kade overhears him and begins to worry about what would happen to her current self. After she reveals her wish of attending school, their father immediately admits her and Sakuta attempts to accompany Kade to her school, but the trauma resurfaces when she sees other students. After it keeps on happening, Sakuta tells her that they can come back to school later and that there is a special place she could enjoy her time at for now. The two decide to visit a zoo in an effort to lift Kade's spirits. Sakuta presents her with a year-round pass, specifically for the zoo's panda exhibit. During the evening, Sakuta tricks Kade into thinking they are taking a shortcut home but instead guides her to school. Finding themselves alone, the visit provides comfort to Kade, and she declares her readiness to return to school once again. However, the following morning reveals a bittersweet outcome as Kade's previous self has resurfaced, resulting in the loss of her recent memories. While paying a visit to Keed in the hospital, Sakuta hears the doctor's remark and realizes it will be impossible for him to spend a moment with Keed that just disappears. Overwhelmed with grief, Sakuta starts blaming himself for not being able to save her from the recent loss she experienced and heads out while screaming agonizingly. This emotional turmoil causes his scars to reopen. An older version of Shoko, whom Sakuta had encountered during his younger years, tends to his injuries. During his bath, Shoko reads entries from Keed's diary, which she had started writing shortly after her initial memory loss. Kate had anticipated regaining her previous memories and expected Sakuta to respond negatively. As a result, she created a list of goals to provide him with joyful memories once she reverted to her former self. This revelation devastates Sakuta even further. The following day, Sakuta discovers a note left by Shoko, only to later learn that both versions of Shoko have completely vanished. Ryo suggests that Shoko might have been an illusion created by Sakuta, 
Mei, finding Shoko's note, becomes enraged and storms off when Sakuta tries to explain this situation to her. However, Nandoko comes to the rescue and informs him about his girlfriend's birthday. Determined, Sakuta follows her to her filming location, surprising her with his presence. On an unplanned date, Mei apologizes for not being there to support him during his crisis and Sakuta expresses his happiness at having her by his side. After a good while, Sakuta and Keed pack their belongings at the hospital. Sakuta expresses his gratitude to Keed, who reveals her newfound interest in attending school, knowing that she is no longer alone. Will they ever get to solve this strange phenomenon that is adolescent syndrome? What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. For more, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel.